the... Alrighty, uh, hello everybody and welcome to yet another edition of Paradigm Shift, an educational comedy, and we have Richard with us, well, you know, Dave Kelso, me, Time Warrior, of course, uh, Richard Hamilton, a.k.a. General Tate, and um, we have Daphne Dugan with us as well, and this episode is titled Legislation is a Magical Force Shield, which is, court, of course, sarcasm for things like gun-free zones, because to quote American politician, U.S. Representative from Maine and Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives from 1889 <laughs> to 1891, Thomas Reed said, <clears throat> One of the greatest delusions in the world is the hope that the evils in this world can are to be cured by legislation. And we've got a lot of this sort of delusional thinking going on these days, and this Google Hangout is a discussion about that, especially in light of the most recent school shooting and stuff. And for the first part, because Daphne's got limited time and Rich actually has a lot to say, I'm actually going to let Daphne and Rich lead this discussion for about 20 minutes or so while I mostly shut up. And that's due to mo mostly to Daphne's limited time and because Rich has way more to say on this than I do. So take it away, guys. All right, Rich, I'll let you start. Okay. Well, um... As most people would know, there was a mass shooting yesterday within my state, only about an hour drive from here, in a town called Roseburg, which is on the I-5 corridor. And, you know, 10 people, 13 people have been confirmed dead, 10 shot dead on the scene. You know, like seven other people were injured. Um, you know... It's just another mass shooting that's happened here, you know, in in recent in the last recent couple of years here in the United States. But um, essentially, um, really, what it to me, it's just you know, it's another reason why I personally think you know, gun-free zones are a bad idea, and you know people not taking responsibility for their own safety is a bad idea. Because, number one, and I've said this before and I'll say it again and this time I'll say it, you know, vocally, but, you know, buildings are designed to fire code and buildings are supposed to have smoke detectors, fire alarms, fire extinguishers. Um, some buildings are big enough that they have fire hoses, or like if you work out at the airport, you have an AP fire or a class A and B fire suppression s system that basically, basically what it does is it's this huge fire suppression system that's you know vented throughout the hangar, and it basically, you know, with the flick of a switch, it activates the system and it basically covers the entire hangar in foam. It completely fills the hangar full of foam, you know. And people design buildings around that with that point in mind, you know, because you're not going to sit around going, oh, my God, it's on fire, it's on fire, it's on fire, running around like a chicken with your head cut off waiting for the fire department to show up and take care of it. You know, like with fires, you know, when seconds count, you know, the authorities that deal with those tragedies are only, you know, minutes away. And, you know, if you have a fire extinguisher, you can put that, that thing out in a matter of seconds as to where... You know, if you didn't have all of that stuff, the building would burn down and you'd lose a whole bunch of stuff. And I don't get what is with people on the gun issue. It's the same type of thing. It's like, well, okay, allow people to conceal carry. Allow, pe allow tra trained teachers, and it's not hard to get trained how to shoot and reload and use a gun. People who say that it's hard or impossible, you know, they need to reanalyze what they're talking about number one, and number two, if they don't know what they're talking about, they shouldn't be saying anything, you know. Um, the only way these types of things are going to be, be prevented greatly is when people take personal responsibility and when people, you know, step up to the plate and, you know, um, realize that their own well-being, their own safety, and the safety of others around them is up to them. It's not up to some guy in a blue uniform that's going to show up ten minutes later after the damage has been done, ten people are dead, and seven are injured, and three in the hospital. 
you know. And it looks like Daphne dropped off. Um, you know, it's it's not a Sky, to, see, uh, Skype's being retarded. One sec, I'm I'm okay, trying to okay. get her back. Okay. Continue when she returns. In the hell here. Um, yeah, this uh, this laptop is that I have a Skype on. It's being a little bitch for some reason. I'm going to try rebooting it right quick. This is really weird, and this has never happened before. Um, Basically, it's um, it's just deciding. Oh, I know I have an internet connection and stuff, but uh, oh, weird! Now this stupid thing. Hold on, video call ended because the connection was lost. Okay, so now, okay, what the hell got bumped and where and what in the? Ooh, fuck here. This is weird. It's like the the net connection to both of these laptops just like drops for no damn reason. Everything is plugged in, connected, all that. Um, everything working. Obviously, you know my router and everything is working. Otherwise, I wouldn't you know be able to be on this call at all. Period. This is really, really strange. Hmm. Completely bizarre. I'm just physically checking everything here. Wow, the universe is just being a big freaking troll today. Mm -hmm. Universe is like, sorry, Daphne. Yeah. You're not supposed to be on this one today. Shall I continue or do you want me to wait? Yeah, you can continue. It it really makes no sense to stop. I don't know. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to resolve this error. Okay. Um, well, okay. I'll just continue with what I said on Facebook, which I think holds as true as I'm saying right now. Just continue with that. Okay. Let's go there. Okay, I'll just say what I said here. Um, I will continue to remind those to blame tools for acts of evil. You know who you are. I've ne never heard that we should ban lighters, matches, and fire starting materials because of arsonists. That is what fire extruders and fire exits are for. The world is a beautiful place, full of many wonderful and great people. But this does not mean that there still aren't bad and twisted people who will do unimaginable things like we witnessed yesterday. I believe the best thing we can do is take responsibility for ourselves and those we love around us and protect ourselves. We have fire extinguishers and fire exits in buildings for a reason, so you can get out. I mean, ne you never hear of a school waiting, uh, a school full of people waiting for a fire department to show up to pull burning, you know, people out of a burning building. Most of the time, all the fire department is there to do is to control the outcome of the blaze, like with fire. Handling tragedies counts in seconds, not minutes. 
All the police do in most instances is do what we saw yesterday, file a report and count the dead bodies. I find it rather foolish that some of us as a society call to ban objects rather than make personal account, rather than to take personal accountability for their own safety. The world is a dangerous place. There is never any guarantee that every day will just be another day. To me, there is. To me, this is just another example of why we need to take account. Okay, you can take a pause, Rich. We're merging things back. Hello, did we get it? Yeah, the universe is being a freaking troll. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do. Yeah. Out on that lately. Yeah, it's really weird. So anyway, uh, sorry to inconvenience you, Rich, but could you please start that all over again so that Daphne could hear it, then we'll proceed forward. Sorry about that. Okay. I'll start over. I will continue to remind those who blame tools for acts of evil. You know who you are. Oh, and by the way, I am referencing the Facebook post because I figured this will get the point across in the best way because I put, you know, everything I was thinking. I was putting everything that I was thinking, you know, onto this, so. Anyway, you know who you are. I've never heard that we should ban lighters, matches, and fire starting materials because of arsonists. That is what fire extinguishers and fire exits are for. The world is a beautiful place full of many wonderful and great people. That does not mean there still aren't bad, twisted people who will do unimaginable things like we witnessed yesterday. I believe the best thing we can do is to take responsibility for ourselves and those we love around us and to and protect ourselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. We have fire extinguishers and fire exits in buildings for a reason, so you can get out. I mean, you never hear of, of a school waiting for a fire department to show up and pull people out of the burning building. <laughs> Most of the time, all the fire department is there to do is control the outcome of the blaze. Like with fire, handling tragedies mm -hmm. counts in seconds, not minutes. All the police do in most instances. All the police in most instances do is what we saw yesterday: file a report and count the dead bodies. I find it rather foolish that some of us, as a society, call to ban objects rather than to take personal responsibility for their own safety. The world is a dangerous place. There is never a guarantee that every day will just be another day. To me, this is just another example of why we need to take accountability as individuals to protect ourselves and our families. Because, yes, there are some twisted, sick mothers out there. But if I am threatened, I don't want to be cowering on the floor for, de for dear life waiting for the police to show up again to kill a bad guy with a gun. Overall, I have always found this argument over banning guns laughable. It is like saying we should ban lighters and matches due to arsonists. Like I said, fire extinguishers and fire ex ex exits exist for a reason. The only thing that will stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. When seconds count, the police are only minutes away. Instead of saying coulda, woulda, shoulda about yesterday, I'm going to take personal responsibility to protect myself in the future. I encourage those of you around me to do the same. And continuing off of that main post, you know, that's how I personally feel. You know, all these politicians, all of these people like Obama getting on TV yesterday and saying, oh, we need to ban guns, oh, oh, me with the teleprompter, oh. It's like, shut up. Not and to mention the hypocrisy of it. And to the people who want to publish the shooter's name all over TV, shut up. You're not You're not helping. You know, I'm not going to refer right, the shooter's name. Are. I'm not going to refer the, to the shooter's name here. The shooter is not going to be mentioned. That's what the shooter was hoping for. That's what those trolls, those sick, disgusting trolls on 4chan are hoping for. What about you know, the Pope? I, Oh, you're not a Christian if you have guns. Well, I'm yeah, yeah, and, 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 yeah, and then the, and then the Pope but comes out saying you're not a Christian, Christian and guns. they're the ones who have all the guns and want all of the guns. Isn't that isn't that uh, right? I'm, I'm, not, right I'm, not, I'm not Christian. Uh, I'm not, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm not gonna go into politics right. just yet. I'm not, I'm just gonna talk about I'm. Hell, I'm not going to go into politics. I'm sick and tired of going into the political matter on this. You know, both sides are both equally... Well, yeah, you're, and you're right, because it has absolutely nothing to do with politics. I'm, uh, I'm just going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to talk about, you know, personal accountability here and defend... Well, 
my personal thing is defend the laws that you do have, you know, that are already on the books, like the 1993 Brady Handgun Violence Prevention Act. Hell, let me pull that up right now, FBI.gov. And Dave can While you're share. doing that, you said something that really uh, triggers on my view of it, uh, because, you know, I come from a much more energetic um, spiritual ways of the universe looking at it, and you nailed it right on the head, and it's personal responsibility. The thing is, is that most people are not taught personal responsibility. People are taught to obey. So what happens when we aren't in a, uh, in a place where we're indoctrinated, like a school or, um, you know, a solid place of work, because most of these people who are irresponsible don't... Uh, don't have a place that they felt they're kept in line. They're basically left to their own devices, and nobody really knows how to function. Nobody really understands what personal responsibility is. If everybody understood what personal responsibility is, then we wouldn't have these problems because people would be doing exactly what you're saying, is that we understand that there are unstable people in the world who could, you know, break the law and do all these things, and I'm not afraid of that, but I'm going to be prepared to handle any situation that I might find myself in, and I need to be able to care for myself and those around me with just what I have and what I'm able to do, and I can't be dependent upon others to come in and do that, because just like you said, they don't get there soon enough. They don't get there in time to stop anything from happening. They get there in, you know, scoop up all the pieces. There's no sort of prevention that comes from the government. In fact, everything that they always do is an after the fact. They don't want to do anything up front because then we won't obey. If we have a sense of personal responsibility, then we might actually decide, hey, what is it that I really do like? What is it? How do I want to live my life? And how do I accomplish that? Oh, you mean I have to take responsibility for all of the stuff that I do and I can't just go blame it on somebody else? So I really view that we are in one of those times where we are seeing this corruption. We're seeing this quote unquote evil. I don't believe in evil, but you know, there are, uh, you know, evil actions, I guess. Uh, but, we're seeing this insurgence of all of this because we are starting to hold each other accountable for this stuff. If you, you know, if you look at just the day-to-day -day things, the people are holding each other a lot more accountable and not waiting for those authority figures to come in and do it. So we're going to unfortunately see a heavy decline uh, or what appears to be a decline in our uh, ability to show love to each other before we understand exactly what we need to do. So you were right on it. Oh, I love it. I'm just buzzing. And seeing as the new season of Once Upon a Time started in its first episode, I'll actually quote Once Upon a Time and where they say, evil isn't born, it's made, and the same can be said for good. So it, it's it's all about that. Everything is neutral. It's just what are we gonna what are we gonna do with it? You know, who are we gonna decide to be? What are we gonna do with it? Nothing is inherently good or evil. A hammer isn't inherently made only for bashing people's skulls in, and you know, and and, that, and that's it. Oh, a hammer can't be used for for anything else other than bashing people's skulls in. No, you can use it to to build things with it too. But you know, let's let's all ban hammers, right? <laughs> Whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, what'd you pull up on the site there? Well, I want Dave to show it because his screen has oh. better uh, resolution <laughs> than mine. That's I, I, I can. Sent, that's uh, why I sent you the links on Skype. Okay. Well, one moment, and I'll. Right. Well, let well, me know. When I'll, I'll load. I'll load that puppy up. Actually, one second here. Yeah, personal responsibility is first. so huge um, in in everything. Mm -hmm. Because if we, because if everybody was personally responsible, Wait, which one do you want me to we, load up? The first or the second link? You sent me two. 
Rich, oh, Rich just dropped. Um, give him a second. He'll be right back. He just got like booted there. He just got well, like, he, he just got like punted. He'll be back in a sec. I guess. Oh, there he is. Rich, which link do you want me to open up? The first one or the second one? Um, let me you check. sent me two. Yeah, I know. Uh, open up the first one. Okay, hold on. I'm getting there. Okay, I am there, and let's uh, screen share this mofo. Start screen share. Here's the the infinite Google Stargate. <laughs> and there we go. We are there. That is, for everybody who is looking, the Federal Bureau of Investigation website talking about the National Instant Criminal Background Check System that some people in this country, which seems like a majority, seem to think doesn't exist for whatever reason. People think we need more common sense gun laws. Wait a minute. Those laws have already been past so what what's with this more common sense stuff it sounds like gun registration to me if people would yeah. do their research and simply get off their ass and stop listening to what they get told on CNN and all these local news networks and maybe realize for a minute that there are already laws out there that are already covering these very things that people seem to think for whatever reason because they're unwilling to do research don't exist maybe they would learn that you know these things do exist. Yeah. Yes, and the, the other side is that just because the laws exist doesn't mean that they are being followed. And the people that are in the purchase of the gun sales themselves are usually not the ones who are involved in using them maliciously against other humans. Well, yeah. Guns are usually yeah. acquired mm -hmm. somehow through some... Well, yeah, they, they, they either get them through family members, you know, because they stole them, exactly. like that one, exactly. like that one, like, like right. that one guy, like that one guy, Sandy Hook, he stole his mother's, you know, AR that he never took into the school, by the way. That's another misconception. Well, you know, yeah. Uh, blast you know, other head. He went, he went into, he went, in, he, went, he, can, went into, he went into, he went into that school with two pistols and, you know, he used two Glock, nine, you know, Glock 9mm pistols. This guy, you know, here at this, you know, uh, Umqua Community College, he bought like four pistols legally going through the background check system, which I'm going to read out right here. The National Instant Criminal Background Check System, or NCIS, is all about saving lives and protecting people from harm. Now, That's the idea. And real quick, that law, you have, which you already have, in place, did that the prevent people doing these background checks are actually reading them. Yeah, Rich, quiet a second. She wants to say something. I'm sorry. Real quick, um, we're assuming that the people who are conducting these background checks are actually using them to determine whether or not to give somebody a gun. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. anyway, go ahead. Yeah, no, the, the, yet again, this is a law that's already on the books. It's already here. You know, we've had it since the early 1990s. We've had it for well over 20 years, you know. It's a system that works, and it only takes about five minutes. I've seen this process firsthand. You go to any gun show, you go to any gun shop, you go anywhere, and you want to buy a firearm, you have to go through that system. And if it comes red, if it red flags and says, you know, for whatever reason, like you have a felony or, you know, criminal conviction of some sort, you can't buy a gun. Sorry. You're shit out of luck. And, you know... <laughs> What we need to be doing right. as a society is enforcing the laws that we do have, which, you know, people don't seem to realize that we need to support the laws that already are, are on the books instead of proposing these new ludicrous laws that are just going into mampy-pampy land, you know, that aren't going to do anything anyway. No, there, there is no law that's can going to prevent things from happening. This guy, like I said, from the news articles I've read, legally went to a gun shop and bought, like, four handguns legally. He had nothing on his record, squeaky clean, and then he went to that school and decided to do what he did. You know, there's no determining what a, bad, a person's going to do with a with a gun. You know, it's like it's like right. stating it's like well, stating I, 
we need to put more laws on hammers because you can bash somebody's skull in with a hammer. It's like, well, you can build a house and hang picture frames with it, too. Exactly. I only have a couple more minutes here, so I'm going to put in my, I guess, my final thoughts on this stuff. And I totally agree with everything that you're saying because the laws that we have are sufficient. It's not a matter of the amount of laws that we have. It's the matter of people following the laws that are in place. And no matter what we do, with when we continue to try to control situations, they will always remain out of control, ultimately, because we're starting in the wrong spot. The issue isn't about controlling the guns. The issue isn't enforcing the laws. The issue is making everybody realize that it, everything starts from within. It has to be a change in response, in mentality, to gain that personal responsibility where you realize the impact that your choices have on everybody else and how they ultimately really affect you as a person. And if we can shift consciousness, all of that stuff will automatically fade away. We continue to try to fight all of these things, and what we're doing is we're essentially fighting each other. But if we can take the process ourselves and we learn exactly how it is that we need to function for our highest and best and really just get in alignment with our divinity to begin with, and we show each other how to do that, all of this stuff falls away because it won't even be things that we want to do. Guns will turn into something that's just for target practice and something that we enjoy doing and not because we're angry or we're hostile and we want to hurt each other. That all yeah, comes from an it's just like, it's just like, it's just like the war on, insert whatever you want in the blank here, only creates more of that which you just filled in the blank. Exactly. And it's because these children are not getting what they need while they're children, and then they aren't learning how to deal with what's going on inside of them. So they deal with it the only way that they know how, which is aggression, because they are bottling it up so much. When you bottle up any emotion for a great amount of time, it eventually builds so much pressure and it just explodes out of you in a manner that is not healthy. And it, you know, and it's so silly to think that the change has to happen from without because we've been trying to change things without, you know, or on the outside of ourselves for millennia. And that's why we're here where we are. We keep trying to change everything on the outside and it keeps getting worse and worse and worse. You know, we change the way that our food comes. We try to make it, and now we're realizing that we've really screwed everything up, and now we're going back to, you know, how things make us feel, how they affect us on the inside. So if we can just be the change, it shows everybody and allows everybody to also do that. Just like when you get mad, it gives whoever you're mad at, whoever you're directing your anger at, the right to respond in that same manner. But when you approach somebody from a place of love, you also give them that right to respond. And the thing is, we're too busy trying to fight each other and make everybody else see our way that we are totally forgetting that we're supposed to be honoring ourselves and each other. Because if we did all of that, anything that we didn't like, we'd just walk away from. And really, if we were totally in alignment where we all want to be, our souls are craving it, is that we wouldn't even come across those people who would make us feel that way without knowing that they are in our reality to help us grow, you know. But we aren't to that place yet. We are still learning about personal responsibility, and that means, you yeah. know, just being and by walking By walking away from, I don't think Daphne means ignoring the cockroaches and the walls. I think she just means walking away from, from those arrogant justification paradigms where where we're shaking our fist and we want to make everybody else the bad guy instead of instead of realizing you know just because someone else is driving drunk doesn't mean I need to get pissed off and drive drunk just because they are it's it's like it's hypocrisy um, that we're, we're taught to be totally hypocritical exactly. like when we something when we see something that we don't like we then become that and do it back and say, well, we, I didn't like it that you did that to me, so I'm going to just sit here and be a big hypocrite and do that same thing instead of actually doing what I actually think is right. I'm just going to get all butthurt and go into a rage like a toddler and do the exact same thing the other person's doing and make myself grade A hypocrite. 
Exactly, exactly. That was a perfect summary. And I'm a, I do need to get going, so I appreciate my involvement and allowing me to be here, and I can't wait to hear how the rest of this goes. Alrighty, uh, do you want us to call you back in a little bit, or are you uh, AFK for the night? Um, I'm done for the night because it's Friday and everybody's home. Go. So. Okay. All right. All right, guys. Because if it was only going to be for like an hour or something, we could call you back in an hour. But if you're done for the night, then you're done for the night. Yep. Uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I will talk to you later. Yep. Love you. Appreciate you. Thank you for participating. Bye. And see ya. Bye. Later. See ya. So anyway, I guess you can continue reading uh, from this page. I've got that back into view. Yeah. Um, anyway, you know, as I was saying, you know, instead of pushing all these new laws, you know, that would just give politicians an advantage and just take people's guns away and, you know, do toddleristic type moves which solve nothing but make things worse, you know, take responsibility, stop, you know, crying like little children and saying, you know, uh, world, the, the, the universe gave me a boo-boo, I, I need to be babysat some more. It's like, no. Dust it off, wash off the wound, put on a Band-Aid, get back up, you know, educate yourself, look at what laws are on the books, research into how, you know, the gun culture actually is in the United States, and actually, instead of going off of what Hollywood states is, you know, gun culture, and, you know, take personal initiative. That's what you do, you know. But anyway, for the Brady, on this page, uh, for the Brady Handgun Act, Handgun Violence Prevention Act of 1993, and launched by the FBI on November 30th, 1998, the NICS is used by Federal Firearms Licenses, FFLs, to instantly determine whether a prospective buyer is eligible to buy firearms or explosives. Before ringing up the sales, cashiers call in and check to the FBI or other designated agencies to ensure that each customer does not have a criminal record or isn't otherwise ineligible to make a purchase. More than 100 million such checks have been made in the last decade, including more than 700,000 700, denials. That's 700,000 people that were turned down because they weren't eligible for whatever reason. You know, now I have read the actual rules in there. Now they say, uh, you know, being dishonorably discharged from the military disqualifies you from buying a firearm. I personally think that's bullshit. You know, that's I think that's dumb. I don't think somebody would have their constitutional rights because ripped, stripped because they act. You know, they got kicked out of the military for whatever reason. That's bullshit. But you know, the rest of it, it's totally legit. You know, it's totally understandable. You know, um, but anyway, yeah, that's essentially what the National Instant Criminal Background Check System is. It already exists. People act like it doesn't exist. You know, um, I remember when the Sandy Hook thing happened. I had a, you know, one of my teachers and I got into a little discussion on that because Obama was talking about, you know, more common sense safety stuff for firearms which already exist and she's like oh well you're just being this or that or you're being racist or whatever hold on okay um i guess rich has to take a pause here for a moment and he'll be right back with us um, but yeah um, I'm totally in agreement with um, what Rich has said here and um, I've been kinda seeing some funny Facebook images in regards to um, to this sort of thing, um, Rich shared this on his Facebook page, and 
you know, it was attached to his original rant that he posted. Evil does not exist within a gun. It exists in the minds and hearts of those who pull the trigger for evil purposes. Um, then, of course, for those of you who are um, Andromeda Ascendant fans, this is uh, Clock Kid. Aren't you just a clock? I'm a warship. <laughs> um, then there is this one. <clears throat> And that's the snooze button. <laughs> <clears throat> then, of course, uh, it's a clock. Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, like it's, it's one of those. Um... Yeah, one of those nuclear clocks there. Oh, whoops. Just... Why did that happen? It is uranium powered. It is a clock. Oh, yes, it is a clock. It Most is run definitely. by Windows. Seven. We have detected that there is malware on your Windows Seven. Would you like but to blow up? Would you like to blow up the world or delete the malware? Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, let's see. Then there was. Um, Sorry, Windows committed to an illegal operation. Please check back again later. <laughs> and it must be nuked. Blue screen okay. of death. I'm trying to go to this one image if uh, Firefox will let me, or Facebook, or whatever the hell the dysfunction is. Um, and, you know. Yeah. Um, I wanted to go to this. Oh, yes. This is a troll-free zone. A troll-free zone manifests a magic force shield that prevents trolls from commenting on this post. You know, kind of like how... Gun-free zones also manifest a magical force shield that prevents criminals from shooting people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no sarcasm there, right? Har, har, har. So I say, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, now that Rich is back, I guess he can continue and I can mute again. Yeah, go to the uh, other one, the, uh, the other link, secondary one. It was on Skype. There we go. Switch over myself so that way I know what I am looking at. Wrong one. FBI fact sheet. Yeah, and this is kind of more of a general overview of the law that is the National Instant Criminal Background Check System. Um, the Brady Act requirements. You know, mandated by the Brady Handgun Violence Prevention Act, Brady Act of 1993, Public Law 103159, National Instant Criminal Background Check System, NICS, was established for the federal firearms licenses to contact, telephone, or other electronic means of information to be supplied immediately on whether the transfer of a firearm would be in violation of Section 922G or N of Title 18 United States Code or State Law. The Brady Act is public record and is available from many sources, including the Internet, at www.atf.gov. Not .org, not .com, not .net, but .gov. So no, for anybody who is in denial and their egos and raging because, oh, politicians could never lie. There must be absolutely no uh, safety system in place for a criminal to get a gun. They must just be able to go down to ammunition like in Grand Theft Auto and just be able to buy a gun even though they're a meth cranker. No, but what, sorry, but what about What about dot .sex? Didn't Bill Clinton uh, create that site? Oh, yes, dot .sex. Dot .xxx. <laughs> I had a secret server, too. Her name was Monica. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah. But anyway, yeah, it's, you know, it, it, it's like, no, these laws already exist. It's The problem isn't politicians. The problem isn't madmen with firearms. The problem is you sitting there on watching CNN. That is you. You are the problem. You are unwilling to do anything. You just want to push the responsibility off on a babysitter. You want to push the responsibility off on the police. You want to push the responsibility anywhere but in the general vicinity of you. 
as long as I can have my electric oven and my 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 toaster and my flat screen TV and my my smartphone but, and my but, laptop but, and my PS4. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a common costume. You never taught me responsive about Dibbles or two. Well, yeah, I, I guess that is a problem, isn't it? Hmm. Well, that sucks because well, too bad. Um. It, uh, I mean, it's just, uh, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. The the level of ignorance with people over and over again is ridiculous. We're going down this rabbit hole again. This is like, I've lost count now how many times we've gone down this rabbit hole. How many times have we got? I, 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 I'm, I'm, I've lost count. It gives me a headache. It makes me want to take a shot of really fine scotch on the rocks until I can't think anymore because it's so annoying the level of stupidity and ignorance and unwillingness to look the stuff is not hard to access it's available you can go online you can read it it's there it's like the United States Constitution and the Federalist Papers I'd suggest reading it sometime it's not hard it's not impossible. It's not some magical thing that only politicians are allowed to read. You can read it too. You need to take responsibility as a citizen of the United States. You know. And anybody who's in the foreign, you know, overseas or, you know, in foreign lands looking back on this, I know it probably seems redundant. You're probably thinking with that smug European sense of uh, superiority, why don't they just do what we did? Well, Sorry to tell it to you, butter, Buttercup, but, you know, your little tightly regulated small country is a totally different animal compared to some giant, massive continent full of 300 million people. How the hell are you going to, how the hell are you going to do anything to, to, you know, manage that? You can't. There's no way. It's not possible. The horse is out of the barn. There are so many firearms in this country that you could literally arm every man, woman, and child probably times 10, and with more than enough ammunition to supply everybody. I mean, that is how many guns we're talking about here. It's beyond figures. They're, they, they don't even have a proper figure to, guarantee, to, to add up how many firearms there are in this country. There's just no way to guarantee. There's no way to count, you know. And that's what freaks the feds out. They know the American people are armed. It, it, it drives them mad. They're paranoid. The reason why they're not doing 90% of the tyrannical shit that they could do is because of that reason, like they did in the Bundy Ranch in Texas, you know, trying to force a farmer off of land that he had owned for generations, and they're trying to stifle up rumors and dissent that he's some sort of, you know, thieving, conning, you know, farmer or whatever that's, you know, just a no-good, rotten person. When people fail to remember the fact that it is, in fact, the federal government that owns a majority of the land of the United States that's off limits, you know, because it's just federal land. It's federal forest land. Ninety percent of the land around here is federally owned. Nobody will question that goose egg. Nobody will talk about that. But we'll talk about that one farmer who has a tiny little piece of land out in Nevada in comparison to what the federal government already owns and say, oh, he's an evil, evil landowner, oh, uh, he's going against the government, how dare he, he can't do that, he's, he's, he's nasty, but, oh, when the feds go in, the BLM goes in and decides to kill and slaughter his cattle and ruin his livelihood, or attempt to at least, oh, oh, well, that's just the government doing their job, tax dollars at work, ha, 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 it's like, yeah, shame on you, that's tyranny, that's not okay, the founding fathers weren't for that, that, that is like beyond the federal government's power. That is an overreach. It's like the EPA. It's an overreach. They're not allowed to do that. They shouldn't be allowed to do that, but they do it, and nobody questions it. People just sit there and go, oh, well, that's just how it's supposed to be. Who am I to say? I'm just going to sit inside and eat my fake Monsanto GMO-filled garbage and, and sit and watch garbage on television and just not question anything. La, 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 la. I'm just going to be told what... The mainstream wants to tell me blah 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 and just be and just sit here complacent because what can I do? I'm an individual. 
I, I'm, I'm powerless. I can't do anything. Ugh, and people, it, that is like one of the most common mentalities I see in people. Quit it. Just quit it. You know, if you constantly have that belief system, how the hell are you going to be able to do anything? How the hell is the world going to be able to be changed if that is your idea of being able to do anything? You know, you, you, can't, you can't change the world by sitting on your ass being complacent all the time. You have to literally put the effort in to do the right thing. And the right thing isn't always easy. It's it's not you know just press a button on a controller you know it's it's not it's not just you know it's not some point and click type thing you you've got to literally put effort into it like whether it's making a Google Hangout video like me and Dave are doing right now or literally going out and making signs and you know standing up for your rights and you know possibly being in danger of getting arrested by corrupt police officers that do exist they are out there you can look that up too you know. Whatever it is. I'm not saying go out and be a vigilante and, you know, uh, do dangerous things and fight government forces in a violent way. That is not what I'm saying. I'm just saying if you want to change the planet, take the personal initiative, stand up, you know, people in, people, if, if, every, if every responsible citizen in this country realized that right now and was to do that, things would change tomorrow. Tomorrow. That's how much power the citizen has. But they don't want you to know that. That's why they, you know, constantly roll the brainwashing programming out over MSNBC, Fox News, CNN, all of the different major news networks, ABC, CBS, you name it. You know, that you're worthless, that you're pathetic, that you're little, that you're incapable, that you need to have babysitters to be able to do anything. That's a scam. You know, when are people going to realize that voting for a corrupt, broken, two-party system that is all for the same agenda, that is not going to change no matter who you vote for, who you put in, you know, and the ones that are good in there, it's like fighting a tsunami wave with a rusty tin metal bucket. You know, you cannot and will not be able to fi fix a broken system that's broken beyond repair. You have to, you have to start over at that point, you know. The system as is now is broken. It doesn't work. You know, we're not we're getting close to like twenty trillion dollars in debt. Am I going a little off topic here? Yes. But it goes back to the main point. Personal responsibility is key no matter what you're looking at, whether it's this you know, whether it's gun violence, whether it's, you know all these all these, new, these all these new so called um Laws are are there to do is um, is div is to try and divide people, and um, there's um, a short little thing um, that was done in 1947 called um, "Don't Be a Sucker," which I think uh, fits. And um, mind if I play that? It'll be um, it'll be audio only. I'm gonna play it through the other computer, but mind if I uh, go ahead? Go ahead. Yeah. Have you ever have you ever seen and or heard the "Don't Be a Sucker"? I think I've heard of it. I don't know if I've watched it. Oh, okay. Well, um, here I'll we go. Out my end while it's playing. Okay. I'm loading it up. He couldn't see any harm in a friendly game of cards. What if the other men were strangers? And take Joe Collins. He's got a nice wife at home. But he met this girl at the bar, and she looked after the first couple of drinks. a good old-fashioned word for people like us. We call them suckers. And there are other people 
people who stay up nights figuring out how to take away what they've got. There are all kinds of games. Mike here, for instance. He's got everything in me. He's young, he's healthy, got a job. And he's got a plenty of food. Big factories to make things a man can use. Big cities to do the business of a big company. And people. Lots of people. Enough to work the farm and build the factories, dig the mines, run the business. All kinds of people. People from different countries with different religions, different colored skins. Free people. They can live together and work together and build America together because they're free. Free to vote, to say what they please, go to their own churches, to pick their own jobs. Yeah, Mike's got something, all right. He's got America. But there are guys who stay up nights figuring out how to take that away from me. I happen to know the facts. My friends, I'm just an average American. But I'm an American American. And some of the things I see in this country of ours make my blood boil. I see people with foreign acrimony. I see Negroes holding jobs that belong to me and you. Now I ask you, if we allow this thing to go on, What's going to become of us real Americans? I've heard this kind of talk before, but I never expected to hear it in America. That's what I've seen to know what he's talking about. What are we real Americans going to do about it? You'll find it right here in this little pamphlet. The truth about Negroes and foreigners. The truth about the Catholic Church. Do you believe in that kind of talk? I don't know. It makes pretty good sense to me. And I tell you, friends, We'll never be able to call this country our own until it's a country without. Without what? Yeah, without what? Without Negroes. Without alien foreigners. Without Catholics. Without Freemasons. You know this is... What's wrong with the Masons? I'm a Mason. Hey, that fellow's talking about me. And that makes a difference, doesn't it? These are your enemies. These are the people who are trying to take over our country. Now you know them, you know what they stand for. And it's up to you and me to fight them. Fight them and destroy them before they destroy us. Thank you. Before he said Masons, you were ready to agree with him. Well, yes, but he was talking about... What about those other people? But in this country, we have no other people. We are American people. What about you? You aren't American, are you? I was born in Hungary, but now I am an American citizen. And I have seen what this kind of talk can do. I saw it in Berlin. What were you doing there? I was a professor at the university. I heard the same words we have heard today. But I was a fool then. I thought Nazis were crazy people, stupid fanatics. But unfortunately, it was not so. You see, they knew that they were not strong enough to conquer a unified country. So they split Germany into small groups. They used prejudice as a practical weapon to cripple the nation. Of course, that was not easy to do. They had to work hard to do it. You see, we human beings are not born with prejudices. Always they are made for us. Made by someone who wants something. Remember that when you hear this kind of talk. Somebody is going to get something out of it. And it isn't going to be you. This is not classroom theory. I saw it happen. I saw it first in Berlin in 1932. Five young men that I knew were standing in the crowd listening to the Nazi speaker. Eric was a Catholic. Anton, a student of mine, was a Jew. Heinrich owned a small hardware store. Karl was a farmer. And Hans was an unemployed metal worker. To all the Aryan Germans, I say it is time you inherited the nation which rightfully belongs to you. To you alone belongs the glorious destiny of the greater Germany. 
The Nazi party will provide land for the farmer, work for the worker, and profits for the small businessmen. Who is getting these things now? The Jew. The Jew who has stolen our nation and our birthright. Who makes all the money and takes all our jobs? The Jew! He must be shunned. He must be ostracized. He must be eliminated. And the Catholics. We don't want our great nation run by a foreign church. We Germans will know what to do with these people when the time comes. They and their faith must be destroyed. Then there are the Freemasons. In Germany, we have no place for secret societies. There will be only one society, and that is the Nazi party. There will be no secrecy about that in the new greater Germany. One by one, he attacked each minority and he split them off one from the other. These men were all fellow Germans when they came here today. Now they were split into rival groups, suspicious of each other, hating each other. They were being swindled, all of them. But the man who was really being fooled was Hans. He was pure German, according to Nazi standards. To him, they promised everything, and he fell for it. That's how Hans became a superman. They gave him a uniform, and they pumped up his ego. He wasn't just a little fellow out of work anymore. He was a member of the master race. Hans and thousands of others like him all playing a sucker's game. They gambled with other people's liberty, and of course they lost their own. A nation of suckers. Hitler needed these people. There was lots of work to be done. There were trade unions to be smashed, because unions were organized and might offer resistance. There were many political parties in Germany. These the Nazis destroyed. They were determined to smash every organization where people might band together and resist them. There were Jews to be beaten and killed. The Jews were not powerful, but they were a convenient excuse for all the nation's ills. And besides, a Nazi party member could not take over this man's store. Hundreds of Catholics were put in jail, because the Catholic Church had strength and could resist the Nazi drive for power. They had split the nation into a hundred pieces. And then one by one, they had destroyed the pieces. Over these broken pieces, the Nazis rode into power. One party, one nation, one religion. These men had won their struggle for power. They now ruled all of Germany. But still they had trouble with their oldest and most persistent enemy, the truth. They found that truth does not die easily, and so they decided to abolish truth. One great source of truth is literature, so they burned books, 20 million of them. Many great men in Germany who were spokesmen for truth were jailed or driven from their country. Teachers, writers, scientists. Education was discouraged. In five years, college attendance dropped 53%. It was forbidden to listen to a British radio program or read an American newspaper. In Nazi Germany, you had to get your information from Dr. Goebbels. He knew what was best for you. The church was one force in Germany still strong enough to proclaim the truth in public. This Catholic priest was arrested the following day on charges of immorality. The Protestant church also continued to try and fight for truth. The Nazis put this man in a concentration camp. There were others who spoke for truth, and I am proud to say that educators were among them. And what, may I ask, is an Aryan? I don't know myself. But let us see what our present so-called authorities have to say about it. They say he is tall, Slender, blue eye, and blonde. There is no Aryan race. 
and more important, there is no master race. There are people who may find these ideas convenient, but science cannot support them. There is no scientific proof that there is any correlation between a man's racial characteristics and his native ability or character. In all racial groups, we find the same range of potentialities. We find idiots and geniuses. We find criminals and philanthropists. We must judge each man as an individual and not by the color of his skin or his eyes or by the length of his nose. Come in, gentlemen. It's comfortable. And remember that there is no master race that is a scientific truth. Anyone who tells you otherwise is lying. And so for all practical purposes, truth had been abolished in Germany. A lot of my German friends wondered what had hit them. How did it happen? Where did it start? It started right here. And this was where it could have been stopped. If those people had stood together, if they had protected each other, they could have resisted the Nazi threat. And together they would have been strong. But once they allowed themselves to be split apart, they were helpless. When that first minority lost out, everybody lost out. They made the mistake of gambling with other people's freedom. Now let's see how those bets paid off. Carl the farmer was gambling on a better life for himself. What he got was extra hours of back-breaking work, as much as a hundred hours a week. He was forced to stay on his land and produce what he was told to produce, because now Hitler was preparing for war. For Heinrich, who owned a hardware store, the bet didn't pay off either. 104,000 small businesses were closed in two years. And for Hans, conditions hadn't improved any. He had a job now, in the munitions factory, but he worked long hours for little pay. The working conditions grew increasingly bad. And even though he didn't like the job, he wasn't permitted to leave it. And when Hitler decided the time was right, Germany went to war. Not by declaring war, but by a carefully prepared sneak attack. Once again, Hitler needed Hans to do his dirty work. Hans was an expert at brutality this time. And Hitler had decided to use Hans and his brutality against other peoples. The Czechs, the Poles, the French, the Russians. But in the crucial test of war, Hitler's race theories didn't pay off. His pure-blooded supermen were defeated by the mongrel armies he despised by the British of El Alamein. By the Russians at Stalingrad. Then on D-Day by American soldiers of every color and religion who smashed across the Normandy beaches and drove on through to the heart of Germany. For the misguided Germans who had swallowed the Nazi bait, the Nazi game did not pay off. The continent of Europe was strewn with millions of German bodies, pure Aryan bodies. Karl the farmer was left in the snow outside of Moscow. Heinrich stayed in Italy at Salerno. And Hans, who was going to rule the world, got only a little patch of Normandy that he could call his own. We must never let that happen to us or to our country. We must never let ourselves be divided by race or color or religion, because in this country we all belong to minority groups. I was born in Hungary, you are a Mason. These are minorities, and then you belong to other minority groups too. You are a farmer, you have blue eyes. You go to the Methodist church. 
Your right to belong to these minorities is a precious thing. You have a right to be what you are and say what you think, because here we have personal freedom. We have liberty. And these are not just fancy words. This is a practical and priceless way of living. But we must work at it. We must guard everyone's liberty, or we can lose our own. If we allow any minority to lose its freedom by persecution or by prejudice, we are threatening our own freedom. And this is not simply an idea. This is good, hard, common sense. You see, here in America, it's not a question whether we tolerate minorities. America is minorities. And that means you and me. So let's not be suckers. We must not allow the freedom or dignity of any man to be threatened by any act or word. Let's be selfish about it. Let's forget about we and they. Let's think about us. And the film was created by the United States War Department. Um, I'm sure if Obama could be sat down to watch this, he would hate it, he would call it treasonous, he would say it's nonsense, he would say it's stupid, and whatever, because this, this movie, I mean, especially the last part, you know, it, it describes Obama. I mean, look at what Obama's doing. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, no, it's a, it's a typical tactic that's been used by tyrants throughout history, divide and conquer, you know. You know, you can divide races up against each other, pit people against each other, look at what they're doing in the media. They're trying to demonize white people, they're trying to demonize black people, they're, you know, they're using blacks to push their own arrogance across, you know, television waves saying, oh, black, it can't be racist, only white, it can be racist. We ain't, pro, allowed, pro, we ain't allowed to call us racist because you call us racist. You racist. See, I mean, pro, it, it's, pro a gun, mod, it's pro a gun, pro gun, anti, pro gun, anti gun, pro white, anti white, pro black, anti black, pro gay, anti gay. Dot, pro this, anti da 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 da. Division, 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 division. Oh, you're a feminist. You're a, you're a this. You're a blah da 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 da. da all the way across. <laughs> Tons of different I've, shards. I have I I have walked through the Holocaust Museum in Washington, D.C., and I will tell you, it is an eye-opener. You know, you walk through galleries where entire towns were wiped out. Wiped out. Every person, dead, gone. Like, no what, Na like what NATO does today. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, yeah. Entire towns, wiped out, gone, no longer existing, dead, everybody. Women, children, men, babies, doesn't matter, dead. You know, walked through a, an original Hungarian cattle car where they used to stuff Jewish and, you know, gays, Christians, unionists, communists, anybody of any political creed, philosophy. They'd stuff them in those cars and they'd bar them and they'd send them off to the camps where they'd be turned to ash. You know, that is what divide and conquer gets you. That is all it gets you. Or, you know, or, and, uh, and, uh, and all, so and all, get, and all, so and all, and all, yeah, or they die, or they die, or they, yeah, or they die of a million other causes, which, but that's not the point. What it gets you is nothing. It gets, it destroys, not only does it destroy your nation, you know, you destroy everything, you know, that you quote unquote stood for is, is a, is a truthful ideal. Mm -hmm. You know, that's all that gets you. It sends you down to the road of death and destruction. That's all it does. The last world war that was started by many different sources, Nazi extremism, you know, uh, Imperial Japanese extremism, you know, that war cost over 55 million people, you know. And the road that people are choosing right now and thank God people are awakening to it, people are speaking out against it, you know, I ain't the only one, but the road that people are choosing, you know, even if subconsciously, you know, 
is that road. And that road is not a road you want to go down. Because the German people, the reason why Hitler got power and the reason Hitler took power was because the German people were so complacent and so lazy that they did nothing. <clears throat> they did absolutely nothing. They would not stand up. They would not say what needed to be said. They just stood there and they took it. You know? And trust me, as a man who's looked at history and really thoroughly read through history, you don't want to go down that path. You don't want to go there. And I wouldn't be the only one, you know, that would say that. There have been people that have historical degrees who have said the same thing. You don't want to go down that path. Don't go down that path. You know, you, you let it, if, if you give up your freedom for a little bit of security, you deserve neither. Benjamin Franklin. If we were to give away our guns, you know, to some government saying, oh, yes, we'll protect you, <clears throat> you know, you don't deserve freedom. You don't even deserve to live in that case. You deserve hey, what you have coming, you know? Well, for, for those, um, you know, uh, politically correct uh, smug fuckers, I'd like to play the uh, despotism clip from 1946 that outlines exactly why all this smug censorship, left-wing, right-wing, this, that, politically correct bullshit is can only send a country into tyranny. I'd like mm. to I'd like to put this out there if I may for a moment. Go ahead. Go ahead. Here we go. Oh, whoops. One day I woke up and bang. Oh, hold on. There's a Aber advertisement at the beginning. Let me uh, mute that so that the advertising doesn't, uh, you know, get a third party match <laughs> on this video. It's, uh, here we go, skipping, and here we are. <clears throat> you can roughly locate any community in the world somewhere along a scale running all the way from democracy to despotism. One to the democracy end, another somewhere in the middle, and a third. Let's find out about despotism. This man makes it his job to study these things. Well, for one thing, avoid the comfortable idea that the mere form of God can of itself safeguard a nation against despotism. Germany, under President Hindenburg, was a republic. And yet in this republic, an aggressive despotism took root and flourished under Adolf Hitler. When a competent observer looks for signs of despotism in a community, he looks beyond fine words and noble phrases. Which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Many observers have found that two workable yardsticks help in discovering how near a community is to despotism. The respect scale and the power scale. A careful observer can use a respect scale to find how many citizens get an even break. As a community moves towards despotism, respect is restricted to fewer people. A community is low on a respect scale if common courtesy is withheld from large groups of people on account of their political attitudes. If people are rude to others because they think their wealth and position gives them that right, or because they don't like a man's race or his religion. Equal opportunity for all citizens to develop useful skills is one basis for rating a community on a respect scale. The opportunity to develop useful skills is important, but not enough. The equally important opportunity to put skills to use is a further test on a respect scale. A power scale is another important yardstick of despotism. It gauges the citizens' share in making the community's decisions. 
Communities which concentrate decision-making in a few hands rate low on a power scale and are moving towards despotism. Like France under the Bourbon kings, one of whom said, the state, I am the state. Today, democracy can ebb away in communities whose citizens allow power to become concentrated in the hands of bosses. What I say goes, see? I'm the law around here. <laughs> the test of despotic power is that it can disregard the will of the people. It rules without the consent of the governed. Look beyond the legal formalities of an election in measuring a community on the power scale to see if the ballot is really free. If the citizens can vote only the way they're told, a community approaches despotism. When legislatures become ceremonial assemblies only and have no real control over lawmaking, their community rates low on a power scale. In a downright despotism, opposition is dangerous whether the despotism is official or whether it is unofficial. The spread of respect and power in a community is influenced by certain conditions which many observers measure by means of the economic distribution and information scales. If a community's economic distribution becomes slanted, its middle income groups grow smaller and despotism stands a better chance to gain a foothold. Where land is privately owned, one sign of a poorly balanced economy is the concentration of land ownership in the hands of a very small number of people. When farmers lose their farms, they lose their independence. This one can stay on, but not as his own boss anymore. To the extent that this condition exists throughout a nation, the likelihood of despotism is increased. In communities which depend almost entirely on a single industry, such as a factory or mine, maintaining economic balance is a challenging problem. If this condition exists over the nation as a whole, so that the control of jobs and business opportunities is in a few hands, despotism stands a good chance. Another sign of a poorly balanced economy is a taxation system that presses heaviest on those least able to pay. A larger part of a small income is spent on necessities such as food. Sales taxes on such necessities hit the small income harder. In the days of the salt tax, feudal despotisms were partly sustained by this and other effects. A community rates low on an information scale when the press, radio, and other channels of communication are controlled by only a few people, and when citizens have to accept what they are told. In communities of this kind, despotism stands a good chance. See how community trains its teachers. Bear this in mind. Young people cannot be trusted to form their own opinions. This business about open-mindedness is nonsense. It's a waste of time trying to teach students who think for themselves. It's our job to tell them. And when teachers put such training into practice, despotism stands a good chance. These children are being taught to accept uncritically whatever they're told. Questions are not encouraged. How can you ask such a question? Have you got a textbook? Yes, ma'am. Does it say here that our law courts are always just? Yes, ma'am.
Then how dare you question the fact? Sit down. And so we aren't surprised when... But it must be true. I saw it in this book right here. And if books and newspapers and the radio are efficiently controlled, the people will read and accept exactly what the few in control want them to. Government censorship is one form of control. A newspaper which breaks a government censorship rule can be suspended. It is also possible for newspapers and other forms of communication to be controlled by private interests. I thought I told you to kill that story. It'll cost us a lot of advertising. If that story goes out, I quit. All right. What sort of community do you live in? Where would you place it on a democracy despotism scale? To find out, you can rate it on a respect scale and a power scale. And to find out what way it is likely to go in the future, you can rate it on economic distribution and information scales. The lower your community rates on economic distribution and information scales, the lower it is likely to rate on respect and power scales, and thus to approach despotism. What happens in a single community is the problem of its own citizens. But it is also the problem of us all. Because as communities go, so goes the nation. And I'd say that our nation, as it stands right now, is the poster child of every description of despotism that we just heard. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, we've lost, you know, we've lost our respect for, you know, um, ideas that are contrary to the mainstream belief. You know, you, you post something, you know, that's against what, you know, politicians are pushing for. People chastise you, people criticize you, people unfriend you on Facebook, people get butt hurt, people, you know, they, sh you know, they tell you, what's the matter with you? You're not allowed to think that way. How dare you say that the president mm -hmm. is da 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 You're that's a racist. Like, yeah, you're a racist, you're a hater, you're a bigot, you're, you're this, you're that, you're the other thing. Well, to anybody who is watching this, who's thinking that right now, if they happen to be, if they can even stand listening to our opinion, um, <laughs> you're the bigot. You're the hater, you know. So, if you don't want to have I, sex, I would, I would propose, if you don't want to have sex with an 800-pound land whale that makes Jabba the Hutt look skinny, you are racist and sexist. <laughs> Yeah, and you're a fat shamer. Yeah. Uh huh. How do no, you? I, I, I would pr I would propose to take those people that are like that and just like take them to the worst third world shithole country possible and go, okay, you can live here because <laughs> this is your mentality. This is where you belong. We have determined this is where you physically belong. You des you deserve to live in a country that's already fucked up from your ideas, so you can deal with the consequences. With that we, don't mentality. Want you in our nation, we don't want you in our nation where free ideas and free thinking is allowed. We don't want with you that, here. With that mentality, it's almost like damned if you do, damned if you don't, because if you don't want to have sex with her, you are a male chauvinist pig. But if you do want to have sex with her, you are a male chauvinist pig. <laughs> it's like no matter which mm -hmm. way you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's, we're, we're, li we're, we're living in we're living in a topsy turvy land right now as a country. You know, we're up is down, down is up. You know, and now you got now you've got what what was this article I just saw on Facebook that Obama was talking about? It was locally posted by KDRB. Um, what does it say? I don't Obama's. Know. Oh, 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 well, I know you don't. That's why I'm saying. What, you know, that's why I'm answering my question. 
Um, Obama says gun control foes scare politicians. President Barack Obama says opponents of gun control laws know how to stir up fear and scare politicians. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. They should be. They, they should be scared. It, it's like yeah, that. It's like it's like that quote in V for Victory. Um, what was it? Uh, the people should not be scared of their government. The government should be scared of its people. Obama is lamenting the inability to pass stricter gun laws, i.e. gun confiscation, even after incidents such as the shooting Thursday at an Oregon community. That's all this stuff is. The reason why he's pushing it across in the media... Uh, let, let's, let's backtrack here. Let's backtrack. Um, yeah. I... Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know... There have been all of the crap going on. There's been all of this crap going on with police officers being shot by black thugs. He won't touch it. You know, all of these, uh, you know, people getting hurt and, you know, beat up. And, you know, there was that woman who went into that neighborhood, wrong hood bitch, wrong hood bitch. They're beating her over the head. That video is on YouTube and available. There be there's been all this racist stuff, and though it hasn't fit into his agenda... Guess what? He doesn't cover it. But if it's but if it's you know this you know and he can push his little gun control thing you know well we'll cover that. I'll be right back. The phone is ringing. Well, didn't didn't you know only um, you know only white people can be racist you know, black people can't be racist. Just like um, you know only men can can be sexist you know women can't be sexist. I totally hate that complete total hypocritical, you know, bigoted sort of idea. Well, the phone was ringing. It's not ringing mm. now. Yeah, I was just going into how, you know, only white people can be racist and only men can be sexist. I yeah, see. reverse racism? Pathological. It's not a thing. It's, it's not a thing. It's no, no. According to MTV, it's not a thing. Really. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure the act of being discriminatory towards others is racism, regardless of your color. But oh no, if you're black, you're you're all you're all right. If it ain't if it if it's white, it ain't right. That's mm -hmm. what it's turned into. If it's white, it ain't right. It's the but same. Say, but... It is the same fucking mentality as it was back in the deep south, back in the fifties. There's still ignorant trailer trash out there that believes it, but you know, it's the it's that mentality of oh, if it ain't white, it ain't right. You know, yeah. it's it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who's doing it, and whether it's whites, a white person talking against blacks, or blacks talking about whites, or whatever. It's it's that same Nazism, regardless of, of the skin color and, and how it's phrased. It is complete and total, utter Nazism, fascism, and it's yeah, just. No, it's, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it as I said it, you know, on our last episode in 2014. It stops here. Mm -hmm. It stops now. Thankfully, the majority of the people don't seem to be buying into it. I mean, you've got your minority of fanatical idiots. The majority that of posts I see on Facebook, thank the Lord Almighty on that thing that I was just reading about Obama being all paranoid. Everybody's saying, well, yeah, you should be scared of the Constitution, you fucking asshole. You know? Mm -hmm. I mean, what kind of arrogant statement is that coming out and saying bullshit like that? He should be afraid. It's his fucking job to follow the Constitution. You know, it's his job to be upholding the Second Amendment. He fucking made an oath to that. Oh, no, he didn't. He had his fingers crossed. Like all politicians, they have their fingers crossed when they make that oath. I'd love, to, I'd love to know where Fox Brothers Studios went. I'd love to know, too. They who just knows, disappeared. Who knows, maybe they, who knows, maybe they got maybe they got the Obama dildo missile up the ass. Oh, Obama's got a rape me. I got, I got two words for you, Predator Drones. <laughs> You'll never see him coming. Oh, oh you think I'm joking? Mm -hmm. uh, 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 and uh, 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 and uh, and and uh, what was that, old bummer? Uh, uh, and uh, uh, you having constipation there, old bummer? 
and uh, uh, I'd love to see him speak without a teleprompter because oh, I've, like I've got I've got I've got a theory that he's not capable. I mean, you never see him speak without a teleprompter ever. Yeah, no. And when he does, and and then when the teleprompter does go away, he's st- he's like, uh, oh. Uh, uh, oh, I have to speak for myself. Oh. I smoked yeah. too much dope in school. I'm incapable of thinking for myself. Oh. Can someone speak for me, please? You quick, know, it's, it's, quick it's Biden, ridiculous. Biden, 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 I need your help. Get up here, please. Write it in crayon on a piece of paper and hold it up so I know what to say. Yeah. It's absolutely ridiculous, you know? Mm-hmm. I, it's just, it's incredible to me. Well, then when that, that one major in the military challenged Obama and said, um, I don't like what you're doing, Obama's just like, oh, you, shame on you. You you should know better than to say that. And it's like, okay, whatever. Yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm not afraid to call out the president. He's so full of shit. It's not even funny, you know. And and same with any politician. I, you know, anybody who's got this this agenda, whatever it may be, whether it's extreme right or extreme left or wherever. Two wings, you know, I'm not afraid one to call bird. It out. Two wings, one yeah. bird. Stone Cold versus like it, The Rock. Yeah. That's all politics is: show business for ugly people. That's it. Exactly. Do we have anything else to uh, to say on these topics, or have we pretty much covered the gamut, or or what? I'd say we've. Co- I mean, really, you know, yeah. You can't ban objects. I don't think you should ban any firearm of any kind whatsoever. There's no need to. You know, it's unconstitutional. Number one. You know, um, those are kind of the main key points that I feel that. Because yeah. I've, I've got nothing and, else to and, say and that I haven't said a thousand times. down this rabbit hole, we'll speak on it again, because I'm not going to shut up. I'm not going to be quiet. I'm going to keep pushing oh, yeah. these points down, you know? I'm just I'm just saying, I it's, for this particular episode, I can't yeah, think of I think, No, I think, I think we've pretty much said everything that needs to be said. Uh, for the, the moment. Thing I was, the one, yeah, for the moment. We can update later into part two or part three. But, um, or just a completely different hangout. Or a completely different hangout, whatever. Um, one thing that I think we ought to do is put the links to those two FBI sites in the description, so that way people can check it for themselves and be able to see it. Yeah, I could I could toss that in a journal. Yeah, but you know, other than that, anyway. Yeah, I think we've covered everything that needs to be covered here. We've made our point. Yep. I think so as well. So, I don't really feel I have anything else I could say or add, you know, unless somebody were to just... Me either, not the moment. Yeah. So, that's pretty much that. Alrighty, well, thanks to everybody for watching. Hope you've, uh enjoyed uh, watching, listening, and, you know, thanks to Daphne for her participation and and such as well and um, see y'all next time